Africa TV Playgirl Studio Live 2020 GSL Season 2 Code S The Coming Storm What's up, everybody? We're back. It's time for Scarlet versus Armani. Uh, we had a really great match with Morrow versus Prince. Prince showing a lot of promise. Prince even defeating Morrow uh, in, in game two. He basically had Morrow beaten in game one, but didn't do the killing blow correctly. And uh, Morrow managed to wiggle out of that. And Morrow being Morrow, he then uh, came through with a win there. So even Morrow not having an easy time today. Uh, up next, Scarlet versus Armani. Yeah, yeah, this should be an interesting one. Uh, I actually wasn't aware, but Armani is second seed and Scarlet's third. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of funny because I look at it the, the other way. I find Scarlet to be, she's kind of like, she's just more experienced than Armani. I think generally everyone agrees that she's better. Yeah. But yeah, coming in as a slightly lower seed, I still think that she's going to take it, though. I think Scarlet takes it. Armani, though, is he's been he's rapidly good. improving. He did start out, uh, you know, a little while ago as, you know, the lowest ranked player in GSL at times. You know, yeah. again, not a bad player overall. This is the most competitive tournament that there is for StarCraft. But, you know, it's it's hard for me to imagine Scarlet losing this. She's very comfortable, especially in ZVZ at planning. Yeah, very smart um, at the matchup and has a full range of plays. Uh, but Armani's good. We'll see. I mean, I, if Armani won, I wouldn't be like super surprised, but. You gotta lean towards Scarlet here. I think so. I think Scarlet's a slightly safer bet, um, and of course, Scarlet's been in so many GSLs now. She's very comfortable in this setting. Uh, she oftentimes performs very well. Our first map is going to be Ice and Chrome, and that is just now loaded up. This is Game One of Scarlet versus Armani. The winner goes on to face off against Mara. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's see what these two are going to be up to. It's snowing. Middle of summer it's and cold, it's snowing. Man. Yeah. I would welcome some of the snow right now. It's been too hot in Seoul lately. Imagine, though, if it snowed when it was hot instead of cold. It would hurt when the snow landed on you because you're wearing shorts and t-shirt. You'd and have like hot snow hot on. Hot snow lands yeah. on you. It's like bacon grease or something. <laughs> that would be terrible tasteless. That would be awful, man. When it's hot snowing, it's like cooking bacon without a shirt on. Yeah. It's <laughs> pure danger. you got to be careful about that. <laughs> Which, actually, this is, this is a great time to ask because, I mean, science can't explain it. How is rain not hot when it rains when it's hot? That's a good question, Artosis. How would that even be tasteless? So many things these scientists can't answer. They just can't figure it out, man. With Scarlet versus Armani, um, one thing about Scarlet is she rarely makes any major mechanical mistakes in ZVZ. Her decision making is very, very on point. Um, Armani ZBZ, in my mind, doesn't stick out as much to me. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel like we've sure. casted a lot of Scarlet ZBZs. I mean, let's not forget, Scarlet knocked out Rogue in the last GSL uh -huh. on a really exciting series. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure what Armani would need to do specifically uh, if he was going to beat Scarlet. This will, of course, be dependent on what tech routes both players choose to go. I think ZBZ is a, a very good mirror matchup. I know yeah. a, it's a, a lot of people call into question, and StarCraft went into certain mirror matchups and certain uh, patches or iterations of the game. Um, 
But ZBZ, you know, you can go into a very explosive early on fight, or you can try to uh, do some unusual teching in the mid game, or we do have late game ZBZ, which is pretty yeah, traumatic yeah. and very complex. And I like a lot of the games where someone's playing a more mid game approach against a later game approach and trying to see who's going to take that. I like ZBZ and StarCraft too. I think yeah, it's, it's very good. Some really entertaining things that occur. Right now, uh, pretty much mirrored what they're up to. We'll wait and see if a big plume of bling starts anywhere, but it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. So the Baneling's nests, the Baneling nests are both coming down here, but that doesn't necessarily mean any aggression. You can get a Baneling nest just to ensure that you don't die to any of their zerglings. And for now, you know, with both players taking a third base, it seems like it's going to be actually somewhat uh, passive for starts here. I mean, these lings that are coming in, this is to scout and confirm uh, what's going on. Solid scout, too. You see that there's no layer, which is really what you're looking for the most. Yep. We just saw Armani start uh, plus one ranged and then cancel and go into layer. Kind of interesting there. Wonder if this means that he's going to end up going for mutas. It's definitely possible. We also have Scarlet taking additional gases here. The Roach Warren has just now started. By the way, both players are now going for range attack upgrade here on the ground. There we go. Yeah. Roach Warren coming up for Armani right now. Some additional gas is going on. <laughs> These are some droning players right here. Yeah. <laughs> Usually we have one of the players pull the trigger and start to make links, but we're going to go into a really, uh, a really developed game ec economically here. Yeah, there's, there's going to be kinda crazy, actually. drone saturation on all the minerals and gases um, in a little bit here. Maybe not the gases, I should say, but um, yeah. And, and now we're probably going to be looking for fourth and fifth bases. Also, when the armies are going to start amassing. Even the lings that you've seen made, they're not made because they're trying to fight. They're made because they're trying to scout. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is cool. We have a what appears to be a game pointed towards a pretty late and dramatic one. Well, their Pretty economies are one. truly getting online here. It yeah. seems like Scarlet has just a tiny lead as far as the economy goes. What's funny is that either side could have gone for a bunch of links and tried to attack and punish the other side, but this happens sometimes where both players call the other one's bluff. <laughs> and it just, you know, we, we, we basically have two players that have gone untouched as far as damage and have completely set up to the uh, economic positions that they were going for. Now we're seeing deviation. So Armani yes. is making a Nidus network. We, yeah. we we just have roaches being made right now for Scarlet. So it looks like Armani is going to be the first player to try to attack out. And this is going to become a challenge as far as positional defense goes. Scarlet has actually made a couple of drop overlords. So uh, I, I believe what we're going to see is some Baneling drops coming up. But against a, a full-on... Nidus attack that's going to be occurring. Yeah, you might need that stuff back at home. Yeah, like Baneling drops in a pure macro game, which is what this was looking like. Uh, I feel like this would be a fantastic play with that Overlord speed. But right now, this is this is scaring me a bit for Scarlet. So uh, it looked like the, even the Observer actually anticipated. Shine thought that there was going to be the Nidus networks made in the main. Uh, okay, here we go. Here comes that Baneling drop now. Ooh. Beautifully done. Six kills, but the Nidus Network is going to finish. Yeah, Nidus coming up right now, going into the main base. Now that this group of Roach is going to attack into the front. Good micro from Scarlet, pulling back that one Ravager. The second drop is initiated. And uh, I, how many more drones are going to be killed? 16 more drones killed off. The question now is, can Scarlet actually defend against the, uh, the multi-pronged attacks mm. of Roaches here from Armani? Armani yeah. will not be able to recover economically for a while, but he still has an army that Scarlet has to fight off. Well, we're so close to Scarlet's base, even though there is a knight, as Scarlet can get those roaches up there pretty darn quickly. Spine being moved in the main base right now. Right now, the worker count is 64 here for Scarlet, uh, 41 for Armani. Armani is taking a fight up here in the main for Scarlet. Scarlet is sending the rest of her units here, and it seems like in this, uh, this fight, Armani beginning to dominate. More Roach is still popping out here for Scarlet. Scarlet has to control this area. If she doesn't, she'll lose control of her main base. It'll be almost impossible to recover. If Scarlet holds this, she has a worker count. She should be able to keep enough of a lead that she'll have a win here in the end, but it's a very close fight. 
Yeah, it really is a very close fight right now with these queens jumping out for Armani as well. You can see that he is completely uh, committing to this. Now, we have the drones coming out for Scarlet. Maybe a little bit too late on yeah. those drones. She really, all she needs to do here is hold on, but yeah, I, that might not be possible I, anymore. I think you're, you're right, Artos. It seemed like if she pulled the drones a little bit quicker, maybe yeah. like five seconds earlier, this might have been enough to take the fight. Still, though, Scarlet's barely hanging on. The last queen goes down. Well, at this point, their drone count is getting pretty close, so yeah. you have to hold on, and then it's going to be a much more even game than what it was before. So let's see if Scarlet can do it. Looks like she might just barely oh. hold on here. Yeah, somehow, some way, she narrowly held that, but of course, she had to use her workers to defend there. Yeah, um, and that took away the lead that she actually yeah, had. Things are balanced out. I, I think I mean, much right, closer now. Right now, Armani still has the opportunity to initiate fights on the map a little bit more easily. Also, remember that Scarlet needs to remake a decent amount of her drones. You can see her well, main base is not really mining. Honestly, she might want to attack. She does have that one additional attack upgrade that finished, and that makes a pretty darn big difference, you know? Yeah. Well, Right now, Scarlet is not using Nidus Tech. She's also getting the armor upgrade, so she maybe she won't actually attack for a little bit. Yeah, as she drones up, that definitely is when, looking more. Whenever you see case. a player start an upgrade like that, you have to think, all right, well, they're not going to do anything for a while, or otherwise, why would they be upgrading this? Yeah, you if know? you're going to go try to kill your opponent in a situation like this where your economy's hurt, it's not like you need the plus one armor upgrade just in case your attack doesn't work. Yeah, That's just not, in case it fails later yeah. on, you're going to have less stuff with more armor. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to help you out. What? <laughs> I thought for a second, I was like, he missed the changeling. That's too bad. <laughs> now, uh, Scarlet's going to expand out again. She's confident that if Armani tries to attack into her, she'll be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't see an expansion or a fourth base, I should say, for Armani. Yeah, no, so not waiting to see yet. The threat of a Nidus attack again is very real. Don't forget, uh, even though Armani ended up killing a decent amount of drones over on Scarlet's side. She had more drones for longer. That's so right. That is a big, big deal. The earlier you lose them, the more it impacts you. And you can see that uh, kind of being shown here as Scarlet shoots ahead a bit as far as the spy goes. Now, both players have drawn up slightly more. We have the fourth base starting here for Armani. I wonder if we're going to have bailing drops again coming up here. Hmm. You know, it's there's not a lot stopping Scarlet from doing it. Yeah, yeah, I guess, you know, just the, making the banelings and sending them over. But it, the game is slow enough that I think you can't expect that to work again. Well, here we go. All right. Oh, oh I'm sorry, drop. it's a roach drop. Mm, that's going to have a little bit more staying power. But roaches are funny like this because, you know, you see them a lot of times taking fights in big groups, but... They're, they, they take a while to kill. So when you send four roaches over here, it's a headache for the other side to deal with it. And by the way, Armani's counterattacking. I don't Whoa. see anything coming back here to help defend. Well, this is actually doing a lot then, right? Already a queen dead, already eight drones dead as well. I don't think that Armani's army is big enough to do anything here, I'm especially little, in that choke. I'm a little bit shocked to see Armani just move out here. This is easily sealed off by Scarlet. Oh, hold on. Did Scarlet miss move here? All right. Both these areas, it, it's it's too tight of a bottleneck for Scarlet to actually come in and do any damage. Now, there's a Nidus Network coming down here. Some good splitting here by Armani. By the way, uh, worker count again. Scarlet back up to 64, Armani down to 42. So we have a similar situation to what we had earlier. Yeah. Scarlet needs to hold off the attack, and she'll be in a good spot. But Armani positionally has a really, really good setup. He's hitting in three different locations at once. All right, moving up right now, Armani trying to get that damage done, but a gigantic flank coming in from Scarlet. Her army is just bigger. Her economy is bigger. Her upgrades are better. Armani, though, is attacking multiple locations at yeah, once. Yeah, Armani's going to guard the ramp so that nothing else can get up there and start uh, dismantling the main base here. We see the spawning pull under, under attack. Scarlet may try to just force a fight up here. You can see that the angling of a lot of this is not favorable here for Scarlet. But she might just have enough. She should have a superior upgrade here as well uh, with that armor. That's it. She did it. She held it. She wins game one. That was a great match. Yeah, nice and close kind of back and forth there. But Scarlet did seem to have an edge for the majority of that game.
Uh, yeah. Armani pulling the trigger with that Knight is unable to finish her, though. Are we going to have a pretty epic macro game like we had in game one? Yeah, it's a good question. Charlotte's very good at I was actually surprised early. with how drone heavy they both were for a Yeah, minute. we actually don't get that very often no, at all. No, it's not very often. Especially not in uh, Zerg vs. Zergs with Korean players. No, exactly. They right? like if you're going to see people make nothing but drones, go watch the European server. But the, the StarCraft 1 <laughs> spirit, yeah, this is still there of uh, short Zerg vs. Zerg games. So cool to have a macro game here in GSL. Yeah. Everdream will be our game uh, for game number two, our map for game number two. All right. Uh, I mean, Scarlet looked better in that first game, so I'm still I'm feeling it. All right, game two is ready. Scarlet versus Armani continues on. Now we wait. Now we have early game ZVZ where we watch the production tab until someone yeah. builds something that's not a drone. <laughs> I wonder how Prince will do against one of these two. Uh, I, I'm really excited for that. That match. Uh, that'll be the losers' match, of course. Uh, it'll really come down to how Prince's uh, PVZ is. Yeah, we've seen a lot of Protosses dying. PVZ. Yeah. Well, he he had really good planning against Morrow, and that was the matchup I was most confident Prince would be the weakest at, simply because Morrow manhandles uh, other players so often. But uh, look, he looked really good, and even though I think there's going to be some. Um, sense of disappointment that he basically could have beaten Maru mm -hmm. for his first match debuting at GSL and then didn't. Um, I, I, I still think he's probably riding a high saying, whoa, wait a minute, I actually look like a, yeah. a really good GSL player. It looks like I actually sure. belong here. Yeah. So um, maybe he'll be feeling confident going into game two. Maybe. Series two for him. All right, well, nothing uh, out of the ordinary as of yet. Both players going for speed, mostly droning up. A couple things, a bit of scouting done, perhaps. So ZVZ, again, it can go in so many different directions, depending on what tech you want to do, how much you want to macro up versus how much you want to attack. Zerg has this very straightforward feature about it where you can't be both macroing and then attacking. I mean, it's, it's more of a, uh, Protoss and Terran are kind of like a manual drive and Zerg is like a stick sometimes. Yeah. You know, it's bit, like yeah. we're, we're shifting into only making drones. We're going to shift out of that. We're going to make mm -hmm. attack units do this. We're going to shift back into drones. It's certainly true. Uh, Where, you know, you know, for instance, Protoss and Terran, they could be making an SCV or a probe and be making out of their other structures. The Yeah, worker production is a lot simpler in that way. Regard, yeah, for sure. you're kind of making those workers along with everything else, and then you eventually stop. And if you lose more workers, you'll make more workers. But that's the, that's how you show if you're a great Zerg player is knowing when to stop droning. It's yes. one of the biggest questions. Like, remember when Immortal pushes were really feared uh, about a year ago? Sure. And it just came down to like, okay, how many drones can you actually fit out before you have to prepare for this? Yeah, and you know, it's it's a, another funny feature of when you see uh, players who are Protoss or Terran try to play Zerg. Mm. Is they don't stop making drones. They drone at the wrong <laughs> times. Yeah, it's really funny. Yeah, yeah it's we're always such big economy zergs in your life. Yeah, in the 22 uh, years of StarCraft being out, this has always been one of the like, kind of funny quirks of seeing someone switch over is just not really knowing how to do this yeah. thing. Too few or too many. <laughs> it yeah, never yeah. feels quite right. Yeah. All right, we do have some lings out there right now. A few banes being made. Layer on the way for Armani. Oh, and this scouts. is a great Ling scout here. Armani, just like game one, gets the Lings inside the main. And even things like just counting how many gases are taken are essential. Oh, yes. 
And seeing that no layer is on the way, that's kind of a big deal as well. Yeah. A Roach Warren's been placed down here. We have more Lings coming in here for Scarlet, barely killing that drone and then getting back out. Yeah, good little pick off there. Armani going for plus one melee. See, I, I think Armani will probably throw down a Spire. Scarlet with a pretty interesting mid-game attack here. Keep in mind that two Banelings will blow up uh, their Banelings, any number of their Banelings. So there's always this weird dance you have of you want to have one or two Lings attack their Baneling, because if you kill that, it's not cost efficient for them. But if you can have your Banelings kill their Banelings in certain positions, depending on, who, depending on who has more Lings, that can also be good. This is one of the weirder things to watch develop when the game first came out, too. Yeah, Ling Bane Micro was really, really funny in the beginning. Yeah. Watching the different ways it was getting done. Spreading everything just more than one Baneling splash apart and right clicking it in. That yeah. Was the, yeah. The Bane train. <laughs> and also knowing when you want to hit Zerglings with your Banelings versus when you want to hit workers with your Banelings. Yeah, yeah. All right, so Scarlet spread out a little bit. Layer's going to be finishing pretty soon. Interesting from Armani. Uh, we see that plus one melee, but Oof. we don't see any additional tech. There's the Spire. That's kind of late compared to when the Layer finished. Yeah, that is a little bit late, isn't it? It is. Oh, and look at where he puts it. Ah, that's very well hidden. That's not going to be seen. And if Scarlet, some of this will depend on if Scarlet chooses to be aggress aggressive enough, because if you get aggressive enough, you're you're scouting anyways, just because they have to sh you know show their hand. Mm -hmm. But if Armani gets to have a quiet game against Scarlet and doesn't identify what's happening, and I don't know that she she will figure this out. This is mm -hmm. going to be pretty hard to identify. Well, uh, there's going to be so many mutas coming out. Yeah. And she, and the game might be turned on its head. Yeah, maybe. Uh, we'll see. I think the easiest way to tell that there's a Spire uh, will be the plus one melee. Like, if you notice that that's ha happening, uh, when you see, like, that's how I thought it was going to be a Spire, is when melee started instead of range attack. It's like, oh, okay, well, what are you going to do that's going to pair with that well? Yeah. Oh my god, is she gonna find this? No. Oh, this kills me. This is a story of GSL is like it's just a screen length away. <laughs> yeah. Always. Now she's it seems like what she's doing is parking some units up here so that she can counterattack the third later. Mm -hmm. But they are right next to each other. By the way, these links are gonna get this hatch. And that was not canceled. That Ooh. was not a canceled hatchery. Yeah, I think she might start to realize now. Uh because when that when you see something like that, that has no. to do with plus one attack as well. Thing is, the mutas are already out. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know how prepared Scarlet's really going to be for this. There is going to be a Bane well, she doesn't drop. have any anti-air, really. No, look at this. It's going after that <laughs> group of Roach Ravager immediately. Oh, God. Oh, this is so bad. I mean, the Queens can help, but, you know, they're not that great. Mm -hmm. Queens just become the primary target. Yeah, you can target those down so, so easily here. Uh, Counterattack is probably the right thing to do. Baneling drop. Oh! Oh, <laughs> brutal. Overlord draw, uh, shot down before it can drop. This game is falling apart for Scarlet. Scarlet going to try to battering ram her army uh, into what might be a softer ground position over here for Armani. Armani is going to throw what he has on the ground and try to put this fire out, but also a great counterattack. Armani really playing a really incredible game yeah. here. GG, Armani. I mean, executionally was completely on top of everything. Yeah. I think strategically that was really well thought out by Armani. Scarlet was not prepared for that uh, mute attack. And then when we saw the Banelings get shot down out of the Overlord. Yeah. It was well hidden. Scarlet was just completely unready, and that's what happens. You don't have anything that shoots up and that many mutas appear. Yeah. How are, you can't get out of that. And then, I mean, I get the idea of her trying to counterattack and just ram through and do a yeah. lot of damage, but... It's either that or lose all your drones at home, so right. may as well. Okay, so it's 1-1. One, one. Remember, Mara is waiting to fight the winner of this match, and Prince is waiting in the loser's match. So mm -hmm. both those players, of course, looking amazing today. We're going to Death Aura, or Death Aura, as we call it. <laughs> all right, I can't wait to see Speedlings attacking each other during uh, under those uh, acceleration zones. Oh, yeah, that's going to be weird. Wild. Yeah, Ling Bane. Uh, in those positions. Our players have confirmed that they're ready to start the game. 
This is Scarlet versus Armani, game three, another ZBZ. Both players looking very strong. Let's see who takes it and goes to the winner's match. Africa Plex Armani, Pat Okay, so um, yeah, let's see what happens. Again, we didn't have a particularly aggressive series in game one or two. I mean, they were both pretty passive. I did like the pretty crazy tech switch there from uh, Armani. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Scarlet seemed to have um, a somewhat similar setup from game uh, two that she had in game one. Mm -hmm. You know, she, j she just wants to to power up. Yeah, just playing that macro. But so. we've had a, a lot of uh, games where Scarlet just does th these crazy aggressive strats. So mm -hmm. we're going to have to wait and see. Now, uh, <laughs> we're having a drone go up here. Yeah. All right, well, this is, yeah, this is making my last statement look pretty spot on. Well, this is, this is crazy. This is cheese time for sure. Yeah. Some Chez, cheddar. All right, what are we going to see o out of this. It's just going to be for Lings, right? Like, if you're going to yeah, make it I, that I early, so. it has to be. So, this is obviously not on Scarlet's side of the map. Um, it it appears that it can be a launching pad for Lings to get there slightly more quickly, which it might look small or insignificant considering how fast Lings are, but at this level of play, it's huge. Well, just even the speed of that third hatchery. Let's watch Armani and see when his third hatch comes up, because that's, that's right. going to be more larva as well and this Scarlet. Is, this is a unique mathematical situation that happens in ZVZ, is when does your larva come out? When did you get your pool? When did you get your queen and do the first inject? And keep in mind, the natural organic expanding pathway for Zerg on this map, if you're in, if you're in the red starting spawn, is to blanket the upper right. You kind yeah. of spread that way. So this is why Scarlet has taken what would probably be the fourth base uh, for, for the red player. She's just put a hatchery there, and this way she can flank it and, and hit. Now behind this, by the way, Scarlet's gonna probably disguise her setup and make it look here's, like, uh oh. Yeah, here's the question though. She should be making a third right around now, right? right? So Armani has to be wondering, where is that third? Because he has an Overlord looking for it. It's just not there. Okay. Let's... Wait, yeah, is let, she let's... mining from that? She's mining from that fourth base. No. Is yeah. she? You mean her third base? The yeah. fourth base for Armani? The, the Armani's fourth, Her yes. third fourth. <laughs> her third is fourth. His fourth. Look at that, a queen. What? What am I even looking at? What is at? she doing? Okay, I thought... Immediately, it was going to be only Link. Okay, oh. well, now that he's going to scout this, this is bad news for Scarlet. Okay. We actually both whip around our chairs. Armani. Oh, she oh. shook her head and laughed. Yes, Scarlet. That's brutal. Because now this isn't going to do anything. It seems like no, this I think she fire. wanted him to think that she was going to all in. Because there's only two hatches, right? But she was yeah. just droning up there. So she's incredibly far behind from here she's, she's pretty screwed right yeah, now this is, this is bad she lost a bunch of drones she loses this space for free kind of a smart move to make overlords out of it at least you're getting use of the larva oh yeah that is a smart move um okay so on paper this is it's unimaginable that you recover from this but let's see what she's going to do it seemed like what she was uh uh what she wanted to have happen with the strategy was it was going to be scouted a little bit later. Yeah. And by then, she would have set up her trap already. But I think Armani, with that initial link scout that got in, said, OK, something doesn't feel right. Let me just check. Yeah. And he then, boom, he sees it. Well, you know, that's that's part of the thing, right? Like, he got two links in. There was no layer. There was no extra tech. And there was no third base. So eventually, you have to look at that and say, well, it's I don't think that she is uh, platinum level, where maybe you just have all this banked money and you're not making anything. Right. There has to be something somewhere. Right, right, right. So Aspire coming up. 
Does this not give her the best opportunity to come back? Yeah, I'm surprised by the Spire. I almost feel like, and I might be wrong, but I almost feel like this is this is. A Wouldn't bit, just oh, a strong move be good here? Well, I feel like when you're really ahead, you don't need to try to be tricky like this, right? Yeah. And, I mean, you can play a straight-up muta game. I don't want to make it seem like that, but it feels like there's, like, a... Uh, if you just drone up normally and make roaches from Armani's position, What's, against what would you be behind? What was that terrible movie where they had a whole bunch of magicians that were like, it was like, now you see me or something like that? Oh my God! It's like I didn't watch that it's movie. It's just terrible. But I feel but like it's got that kid that always plays like a, a, a kind of smart nerd. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're yeah, they were all magicians that were friends or something. Yeah, and they're like shooting cards around at each other, and it's it's actually one of the worst things I've ever seen. But I feel like this is a yeah, now you now you see me move here by Armani. Yeah, where it's like actually you just have more. You don't have to do this. <laughs> it's like a, now I will saw my assistant in half. It's like stop, just go in the game. Um, <laughs> So he's not just one magician. He's a whole group. Of he's magicians. a whole group of magicians. Like, are you guys too cool for everyone? Is that what is that what's going on? Those magicians were too cool for everyone the entire movie. Yeah. Yeah. Despite and magicians being maybe the least cool group of people. Well, you say that. But have you seen Magic for Humans on Netflix? No. As soon as I saw that guy, I looked at my wife in disappointment and told her she could do better than me. <laughs> Because that is the ultimate man right there. Really? Magician for humans. Watch it. All right. Well, let's see if this is a magician for humans moment here. Or if it's a now you see me moment. Yeah. <laughs> okay, one of those. Let's see that. Let's yeah. see that. Well, gets a couple overlords already. A ton of spores being made by Scarlet. I think he'll start the uh, plus two melee as well pretty quickly here. That's what we saw from Armani. The oh, man. As well. Okay, the queens are coming in here. The mutas have committed to a lot of these drones. It's kind of a funny spot now for the mutas because they can't really get out without eating a lot of damage. They're mm. actually stuck behind the base. They're going to try to fly through here. Um, really, Scarlet has everything that she needs to try to hold this. I love the moment this gets attacked when the upgrade comes over here. <laughs> on it. Um, well, it reminds her to... Yeah, she's like, oh, that's right. <laughs> it's like, well, I have, I have four queens. You're not going to kill that, you yeah, know, right? Yeah. Like, okay, so... Seems like it was more of a now you see me moment than so, a magic for humans moment. So far. Yeah. So far. But if Armani takes a fourth right now, continues to roam about, maybe this turns into a magic for humans maybe moment. it does. I don't know. Yeah, these mutas. You, you, the weird thing about mutas is that they have a specific time in the game where they're valuable. But as, the, as you tech up further, they don't really become that useful. Oh, oh here we go. These lings are going to come in here. There's a lot of critical tech right over here. Getting on top of the Lurker Den. The Lurker Den goes down. And a station pit here as well. We'd love to see her just throw up the hive. Yeah, there it is. So it's like, well, okay, you might kill that, but unless you wanted to make oh infestors. Oh, my God. A great counterattack here by Armani taking out all the drones. Uh -oh. Also a denial on his Hydroist Den stopping that upgrade. That is so painful for Scarlet. She has almost nothing left. And these mutas turn out to be a magic for humans. Yeah, this is a magic for humans moment. You know what this magic trick was? That he made me think that it was a now you see yeah. me moment when he was like, actually, I'm a magic for humans person. That's why he's too cool for you, Tasis. Yeah. You just never understand, you normie. Yeah, no, I'll never <laughs> get it, yeah. He was like, is this your card, Tasis? And I was like, oh my god! <laughs> you know? How did you do that? All right, Nita's actually diving upon the spores. Okay, this, this game's basically over. Yeah. Armani really, really played well this series. I think Scarlet's strategy, I wish we could have seen what it was, but, you know, this is why you can't do strategies like this all the time in tournaments to get away with it. Is there some small chance of her coming back because she's going to have Hive Tech? Because she can I make mean, gosh, Vipers. I... And Parasitic Bomb plus Queens, you could take out the Mutas. But okay, I feel like maybe, if you switch but... right now, if you go... I think, like, Ultras would be a great switch for Armani here. Ultras could never lose in this position, I think. Well, I think there's a lot of things that Armani could do to just close this one out. But if your opponent's going like all spellcasters, Ultras are good against that, you know? Sure. And you have to go spellcasters if you're on two base like this with so few drones. You have to be like so cost efficient. More Infestors on the way, more Vipers oh, as well. Oh my god. Oh no. I think we're going to see GG in a second here. This damage is just too much. Yeah, look at this. Bainling's just wow. exploding everywhere. GG, Armani Ouch. takes it. That means we'll have Armani versus Mario coming up next, and then Scarlet versus Prince for the losers match. Yeah, kind of a rough game there for yeah. Scarlet. She was trying to do something really ultra sneaky, 
And uh, I wonder if she should have taken the, the would-be fifth instead of the would-be fourth. He was going to scout that, too. So mm. I think no matter what she did, she was going to get found out there. Too bad for Scarlet, but look, she can still get out of this group. Yeah, she just has to doable. take the long road doable. here. Yeah. Um, up next, we're going to have Maru versus Armani. Um, look, Armani looks great. Maru obviously looks great. He had a bumpy game against Prince here. I think it's actually still harder than uh, I expected for to, to call who really gets out. Yeah. Supposed to be Maru, but judging from the games, it, it's looking closer than that. We have a short break. When we come back to the winner's match. Don't go away.